Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Ascension Diaries Guardian Training Workshop. My name is Alexis, and this is April 18th, 2023. We are meeting together today at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and there is about 10 guardians in this Zoom call. Thank you all for joining today, and I look forward to your feedback at the end of this workshop. Today's theme is abundance. And so if that, that word has been bouncing around your head a lot, it may be because I've been reposting a lot more stuff about abundance this month. And I'm hoping that you guys have also been talking about it more, thinking about it more, because that's kind of my goal with these themed month guardian training meetups and just a month of theme anyways, is to just bring certain things to the surface that I want more energy around, more amplitude behind, more of the collective conscious thought behind. And so today we're going to be summarizing the collective conscious thought I've been collecting about abundance in this lecture. There's going to be some visualization heavy. This will this will be a visualization heavier workshop, I want to say, out of the past ones, if you've been watching the last few months. This one, I'm going to do some visualization with you, and it's going to be easy going. I'm not going to try and push you with this workshop. This is supposed to be easy. Abundance is supposed to be easy, and the visualizations are supposed to be, it's going to gradually increase and kind of massage your brain and your mind open into grander and bigger concepts. So we're going to start small, and then we're going to expand. We're going to do some body work also, some energy work, I would say, most likely tapping and some vocalizations is what I'm feeling now that I'm getting into this. And finally, I hope that you have a piece of paper and a pen, hopefully a journal, something that you will look back on, you know, flip through, read multiple times as you keep writing your life down. And hopefully, you know, one of your kin will receive this journal or something and you're writing it to give it some sort of sustenance for your next generations. I hope that you're creating things for you and your next generations and kind of keeping that in mind. It's a big part about this workshop also, but yes, we're writing down. We're going to do a little bit of writing at the end. So I'm going to work your brain up. So when you are writing, you're really going to have a good idea about what you're going to want to write down for yourself. That's the goal is what I was sinking in. So basically I just sat down at this chair and it just kind of Everything just kind of collapsed on me just now about what we're going to do in this workshop today, <laughs> because the energies were definitely different for April, for today, for the window that and period of time we're in with the eclipse coming up on Thursday, the Mercury is about to go retrograde again. There is uh, basically just the springtime energy in general here in the Northern Hemisphere. And then of course, there's the harvest energy also in the Southern Hemisphere. So there's a lot of abundance naturally populating around us with nature in general. So it's a good month to do the abundance workshop because nature is on our side in a way. It's it's better than doing it in the dead of winter or in the peak of summer because those extremes kind of can make this more of a polarizing workshop. So we're in a good period right now. So like I was saying, we're going to do some visualization. So I really want to start it off easy. What's coming through right now for us to visualize is what was the last thing that you ate? So you're going to start really easy for this workshop. So you don't have to write any of this down. If you want to keep, if you're a writer, I'm the same way. I love to take notes. So just do what you want with the note taking. I'll let you know what I want you to write, but I want you to first think about what was the last thing that you ate. And then I want you now to think, okay, how long did it take me to kind of conjure up that thought? How long did it take me to remember that? Okay, now, do you have any specific issues with your memory? Or is that, or your memory, you would say, is functioning at a normal rate, normal level? Okay, with that in mind, I want you to think about how quickly it was, it took you to remember the last thing that you got to eat. Okay. So now, as you can imagine, and the most basic agenda of our living, breathing sort of need factory that we're driving, and that is kind of the plague of the soul. In a way, it seems like sometimes this thing that constantly needs, that it must amass. So 
in this thing we're driving, some people really do lose track and get ungrounded. And especially in my community, I know that that's the case. I know it's the case for me sometimes. And so that's why this is all coming up. And so let's just think, okay, so if it took you a long time to remember the last thing you ate, why? What sort of state were you in when you were eating that thing? Were you in a state of gratitude and really of conscious enjoyment of that item that you specifically chose with all of your power and strength probably to acquire for yourself, for your body, mind, spirit complex? So we're thinking about that. We're thinking about all that energy and that focus. Did you have that ex that level of reverence and focus for that and gratitude for that item you ate just last that you feel like maybe there's no way, there's no, there's no way you could have done that with more reverence, you know, of course. But if there was some wiggle room where maybe you're like, maybe I could have been more conscious with that last item that I ate that I could have been more grateful for it and I could have been more present with it because truly having this thing and this meal or this food and this sustenance is a miracle and it is sustenance and it is something to be grateful for. It's something to thank your ancestors for, something to thank the sun for, the earth for, so many things to be thankful, but so many things have gone into whatever item it was that you ate last. So this is the simplicity I think that we're gonna kind of go into first. So thanks for following you, me, you guys. Some of you guys had pizza last is coming up. What a wonderful dish and such a simple dish in a way that was able to feed a lot of people with very little ingredients. And now, ironically, how much is it to order a pizza to your house? If you really think about it, it is it was in a way a very simple, almost peasant food. And now it's like $40 to get a pizza to come to your house. Am I wrong? For some people, we're really in that situation. So our planet and the things we eat and where we put a, our wealth and our value and so on is another big part of the codes of abundance is wealth and value. Um, time also, gratitude is another big one. So in this exercise and this visualization now, just in case, just in case, you maybe ate the last thing you ate. You didn't have this, the most prideful ceremony over it. You're not like, oh, that's something to write home about. I'm really spiritually connected to my abundance and my gratitude right now. If that was you and you just like shove something in your face and you're, you were on your way and you don't even remember what it is you ate last, let's do this exercise. So come on into your heart space real quick. We're going to close our eyes and kind of come into our bodies a little bit more. We're going to go into our visualization mind. So I want you to visualize that thing that you ate last. Visualize it in your mind. Visualize it as if it's like sitting in your hands right now. And we're going to say, thank you so much for nourishing me. I'm so grateful for this moment and for the many moments of nourishment that I've, I've experienced. Thank you for all of the food and nourishment that has crossed through these hands and through my body. Thank you for the joy of gratitude, how good it feels to be grateful. And just kind of put that energy in that cup right back into your upper heart if you can. Just feel it. Fill your cup, fill your cup, fill your cup with all just the memories, the memories, yes. All right, now that you're holding on to yourself, I want you to visualize now, since most of us do eat food, this is the easiest, most universal example, but I want you to visualize a feast. I want you to visualize the last time perhaps you saw a table full of food, full of food, even if it was just, you know, if you've never seen that before, where was the last place that you ever saw that? Wherever it was, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. <clears throat> where was the last time? Where was the last place you saw a whole table full of food? I want you to visualize that. And now I want you to visualize on top of that, the many times, how many times in your life have you seen a table full of food like that? How many times can you even count them? Can you even count them? I want you to let that fill your chest, fill you up with gratitude more and more like, wow, really it's truly been a great life full of many bounties 
much harvest, much abundance, even from the little things, the little treats to the great big feasts you've gotten to share with other people, these feelings, I want you to call upon them right now. I hope you're smiling. I hope that there's like a smile on your face. Do you remember the first time that you had your favorite food? Do you remember that? Do you remember what that really felt like? Why it became a core memory? Why it became your favorite? What was it about that thing? And were you able to acquire that thing again to experience it more than once? Are you, aren't you grateful? That we were, it was so abundant, this favorite thing, your soul has tried hundreds, who knows how many things, but this one thing made an impact on you. And perhaps you were able to experience it more than once. Like the miracle of that, even all on itself, that is our blessing, our opportunity that we get to experience these things. So that's sort of the abundance energy we're kind of building right now, that gratitude energy in the body and the, in I want you to feel it in your core, also your solar plexus, put your hands on your solar plexus. I'm just kind of like gently building up the vibe, gently building up the visualization, like I said. Okay, so now we're doing good. So hopefully you've been seeing my posts on Patreon. Those of you who are here for the guardian training tier on my patreon.com slash ascension diaries. I'm messaging you often about the space weather and about the abundant or about the guardian training themes and the downloads and so on. And I know this has been on your mind. I know that you've been thinking a little more about abundance. I hope, I hope now, not about you right now, but about someone else. I want you to see, I want you to go into your memory banks. If you can remember, please for me right now, call up. When or what was the last thing somebody celebrated with you about? Usually we celebrate with others about a gain, about an abundance, about something we're super grateful that has shown up in our lives. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. It could be like literally people getting to move into a new home. You're, some of your friends just told you, oh, we're moving. Uh, having a new family member. You know, someone just had a baby or got a new uh, pet, basically, you know, animal baby. Maybe it was about getting a new pool or a new toy or, you know, a new windshield on your vehicle, something, you know, something that you're just like, oh, oh, I got this new thing. Someone has definitely shared with you, I hope, something, a win that they've had. Now I want you to dig into that. I want you to feel that, okay? Because we are empathic beings and this is not just about us and, as guardians. You know, we get a lot of pleasure out of other people having a really good experience, clearly engaging in feelings of bliss and of gratitude and witnessing miracles of abundance and their dreams coming true. Like that's really the vibe we're anchoring in with the guardian training. Why guardians, we're even training once a month together. You know, guardians don't need to meet up, but this is something we're doing for us <laughs> and we want to feel, we want to re recollect and build that field of what were some of the wins that you saw other people having? What are some of the abundance coming to for your family, for your kin this next month, this summer, this year? Someone has probably already told you, and I really hope that you did celebrate with them. And if you didn't, and perhaps there was a moment of maybe jealousy or maybe a moment of doubt or panic because that can happen because we are deeply competitive and it is airy season. So just, it's the most immature sign, competitive, you know, go getter <laughs> wants to race you kind of energy. So other people's wins may feel like a threat to you in a way too, and to your ego. So we've got the shadow side. I'm getting both data coming in too for me about this so that's good you know someone might be like wow I'm gonna be going on this all-inclusive vacation and blah 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 or I'm gonna go on this amazing cruise or something like that someone's told you something about their abundance something they're grateful that's coming in for them right there's gotta be something you've heard about and if you haven't then my challenge to you is then to 
keep your ears open as a guardian and just keep walking around with your happy vibes because I know you've figured out ways to keep yourself centered the best you can so you can keep going. But listen, keep your ears open and celebrate the next person that shares their their gratitude, their abundance, their their excitement with you about what they're manifesting in their lives. Just to keep the pay it forward, kind of keep the vibe from this workshop even bubbling on onward. You may be surprised. You may be surprised how that works out for you, but it may feel like the angels are smiling and laughing with you also when you, when this does, when this will come up more and just smile and laugh with the angels, smile and laugh with the ancestors. What's up? Challenge yourself to just purely celebrate the other in their gratitude, in their abundance, because that is what will come back to you and you will receive more. You will want to receive more. You will allow yourself to even receive more abundance because you'll know you'll be treated with respect and that you will be mutually mirrored with other people who realize and want to celebrate with you instead of see you as a competitor and kind of give you uh, some weird vibes. So that's, we're going to pop those blocks off with that visualization also. So now we're working, we're feeling other people's energy. I have so many wonderful things happening in my life personally. Like I have family members moving into new homes, which you know, what that entails, it's usually a lot more going on than just a new home. They're getting all new things in so many ways, new vibes in so many ways. And people who are moving out of situations that they were kind of locked down in, in the beginning of 2020 this time, people are blossoming out of those situations. People are evolving. I'm watching it myself. I'm seeing people feeling ready to evolve, to expand again, to enjoy their lives again a little bit, to make decisions for their own pleasure and to enjoy their own abundance without feeling like they have to sequester everything away because we might be in a worldwide panic. You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling the ice melt of the abundance of our planet. So we, you and me right now are kind of participating in that confidence that yes, the ice is melting, that yes, we can celebrate other people's abundance and that yes, that this vibe is going to keep paying forward. It's, it's like, I want to see it. It's almost like a nice molasses or like a honey, almost like pouring forth out of my solar plexus. It's just this, like this nectar just being like, yes, like the honey is always here. Like it's all, the nectar of my appreciation and mutual joy and empathy for the creation's abundance and celebration and so on is flowing forth out of me, like golden, like golden nectar. And that sort of energy, just let it fill up your aura, let it fill up, let it come out of your head like a fountain, which is kind of like why I did my hair like this, kind of like golden fountain, like let yourself become that golden fountain, just even thinking about what other beings are manifesting for themselves, what they're accomplishing. And, you know, there's a reason why you've learned about these people's accomplishments. There's a reason you're hearing about this. There is a test there. Also, if you could be mutually happy, that's going to come back to you so quickly, which most of you know, but if this is a now being recorded by, for people who maybe haven't tried that, maybe haven't had that displayed for them by their family. I know we come from so many different walks of life, but it is a mixing pot here. <laughs> and uh, there's so many great things I've learned and even nonverbal cues from people. You don't even need to all speak English to understand and feel good about each other and to know when someone's celebrating and really happy. Uh, they're getting a lucky break or they're sharing a feast. You know, you don't need words for that. You can see abundance. It's extremely clear. You can see somebody who also has an internal abundance, who is has that golden energy of like, I want to say, graciousness and generosity and wittiness even just a cleverness a I want to say innovative personality flexibility these are sort of signs of somebody who's kind of tapped into that abundance that flow they see every opportunity as a new opportunity to lead to something along their path that will keep them going, that will keep their soul, mind, body, spirit complex nourished and going. They trust the flow. 
So now that we're visualizing other people's abundance, we've, you've been doing a really great job. So you've thought about these new family members, their new homes, their new items, their new inheritances, potentially the new companies, whatever it is, these things, I'm sure I can hear and feel all of these examples kind of percolating now that I'm kind of encouraging you to visualize this. So now, now there's these things, these things that people have shown you and celebrated. Some of them you were like, oh, good for you, but it's not really your thing. I'm sure. It's a little easier to celebrate somebody like that sometimes. Sometimes it's even harder when you don't care about what they have. It's harder to celebrate for them. Like, oh, great Lego playset. That's not really my thing, but whatever. But it's like, no, got to give them that enthusiasm. <laughs> Try and mirror more enthusiasm, show some interest. But what is it that when we we're visualizing just now about what other people are accomplishing that you've remembered, other meals, other feasts, other vacations, trips, things like that, right? We're thinking about these these abundances. What is it that other people received that you saw that hit your vibration that made you go, oh, and like have that moment, like, ooh, that pause, almost like that doubt or that, that like, that's what I want feeling. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, that's that's what I want. Like, oh, even like, even to the extent like, oh, no fair. Like you get to go to Belize right now and go look at the ancient pyramids. Like what? Dang it. Like, wow. I'm so happy for you, but oh, you know what I'm saying? That feeling like, oh, I'm so, oh, but I wish I was you right now. Like, oh, that sort of vibration. So we're going to tap into that energy right now. So hopefully you have I see some comments, you guys, the guardians are commenting right now in the Zoom call that we're recording right now about their family's abundance. <laughs> and I'm going to bring that up in a second. So while we're visualizing now, there were some of these things, like I'm saying, you saw someone get and you're like, oh, do I want to manifest that? I definitely want that. Like my body reacted, like my soul, my ego, my personality, my aesthetic was like, ooh, that vibes with me, right? Right? Okay, so a few of those things happened. So hopefully you have your pen and paper now out. So I want you to write those things right now. Write those things, jot those things down. So. Okay, I wrote down a couple of things just that, just to help me kind of flow. <clears throat> okay, good, 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 good. Great, this is good because this is very normal. I've noticed this is a very normal human condition is to see monkey see monkey do, right? We're like, oh, you don't know you want something until you walk, watch it walk past you or roll past you or flash past you or scroll past and you're like, oh my God, something in your, in your, your personality, I want to say, your soul, your personality is like, yeah, whoa, like, dang, I wish I had something like that to look at or play with or engage in more. You know, I, I'm not finished with whatever that is. That looks something for me. There's something more for me in that. You know, there's something more for your soul in that thing, right? The experience, you're like, ooh, that experience, that that's something I want. We're working that energy right now, okay? Some people never stop thinking about this and never leave this state. Also, they're constantly in that sort of hunger. So if that's also, you've noticed yourself getting into that state that also has to do with your neurochemicals also and your hormones. So track your hormonal cycles. Also get your neurochemicals chill. If you need to go on like a carnivore diet or a keto diet to just like chill on all the things that like hype hormones and hype sugars and get your body all hyped and blah. if you need to take a detox and get the hype out of your system it's cool tobacco is also another really great tool also if you've been too hype as a grounding tool it's a sacred tool 
You definitely want to do it to the four directions, just like with cacao, four directions, sit with the ancestors while you're doing it because they will be there. It's a very ancestral, very like beyond the veil sort of medicine. But if you need to kind of ground and you've been kind of floating around, like living in a fantasy world, like bouncing off of things, but not manifesting it because you don't know where to ground, let's work on the grounding part also. So that's what we're going to kind of visualizing. We're visualizing, we're grounding our visualization visualizing a little more. Okay. So next thing we're going to visualize and work through is now congratulations. I forgot to mention you can, and this month's abundance that you have brought in. I know I just asked you to talk about the last thing you ate, but now let's talk about you. Let's talk about the abundance that you have brought in this month. Okay. The last 18 days. What, is there something immediately that comes to mind that populated for you this month that you haven't had yet? write it down, write it down, especially if this is your journal, because you'll look back and be like, oh yeah, April, 2023, I got my boat, <laughs> whatever it is. April, 2023, I got my capacity to book unlimited vacations, like whatever it is, something like that, whatever it is that manifested for you. There's had to have been something, whatever it is, even if it's modest, Something won out for you. I know some people, again, moved into a whole new place, uh, people who launched a whole new product, these sort of things. What sort of new abundance kind of populated in your month this month? Let's write it down. Let's enjoy it. Let's celebrate it. So I want you to grab your cheeks and like underneath your jaw, kind of hold your jaw. Kind of like this, like, like you're hugging your face a little bit. Oop, they got people in the waiting room. Don't want that. Okay, you guys. So the next exercise for the visualization, we're getting deeper and deeper. <laughs> so hold your face. This is like a, a face hug, a hand hug. Take a deep breath through your nose, clear, lift your chin so you have a nice clear pathway for breathing. Fill your belly, fill your belly with air. Breathe out your nose, breathe out your nose. You're gonna hold your mouth shut. Right into your belly. Breathe it out, out your nose. While we're holding our body like this. It's interesting how my arms aren't even like level. Okay. Holding your body like this. Close your eyes. I want you to breathe. Keep breathing. Holding your face like a hug. Keep breathing. Visualize all the goodies you got this month. And now let's just visualize all the normal things that kind of worked out for you. Like they usually do every month. Like you paid your rent. You got your groceries. You know, you paid your electricity or your internet, or, you know, you got your gas and you, you know, electric, all those things, you know, those things that you know you need, but they work out usually every month. Just hold yourself. Just hold in that moment. Like, yes, I'm glad that I'm all right. At least that you know that you're in your hands right now. You are in your hands. Your past, present, and future is in your hands. You're holding yourself right now and you've had a track record. You know, you're, you've survived this long. You've manifested your abundance this long. You just build that faith in yourself. So hold yourself now in kind of like a hug. <sighs> I've grown that faith in myself. I love myself. I appreciate myself. I appreciate all the abundance that I've experienced and witnessed and all the abundance that I know that my heart still yearns to experience. I honor all of it. Honestly, without shame, I honor it. It is me. It's true to me, my personality. It's just happened organically. I can't possibly like every single item and every single person in this world the exact same way, but there is some favorites of mine and I appreciate them. They mean something to me. They are unique to me and my personality. 
And I want to enjoy abundance that it's unique to me and my personality that will make me and my personality fully expressed and joyful, that will make my time in this reality seem worthwhile, and that will lift my vibration and help me shine. I'm feeling, I'm experiencing, and I'm grounding all of those frequencies right now. With a big hug of gratitude from myself for pulling through, choosing me, choosing life, and choosing to improve, choosing to grow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so now here's the fun part, okay? Now, this was the most important part of the workshop that I channeled in. And you may not be expecting, like usual, what I'm going to say. But I'm going to now ask you to hold your arms kind of open, like where you're comfortable. Like so. Kind of in front of you. Like you're, like someone may be handing you like a watermelon or like a big serving dish full of stuff to bring out to the feast. Like we're all, you know, it's all about to start here. Bring this out, bring this tray of food out or bring this toy over to the birthday person. Here you go, hand it over. That's kind of the energy, okay? So you're holding your hands open or like here, hold hold the new puppy or hold the new baby. Like here it is, like that's kind of the energy. So we've got our hands open. The, this has happened to you in your life. Someone has handed you something or you've, you know, passed something along in your hands right here. Okay. So the most important thing for this workshop that I was getting the information about to share with you today was opening up our energy body, like a reservoir, as if we are like a jug of water or like a a vase or like a barrel you know what i'm saying like we have this barrel our our chest is kind of like a barrel shape just kind of visualizing your energy body just kind of opening up even at the base especially at the base at the base just kind of widening up so keep your arms in front of you and i want you to just kind of picture yourself getting wider your energy body getting just wider in a 360, because you need a nice big wide base before you can go any taller, right? So we're just going to widen our base a little bit. So it kind of feels like you're kind of like slumping down, almost like you've turned, like you're at, you don't have any bones anymore and you're just kind of melting and you, how you would kind of like melt outwards in all directions, just kind of like, hmm, I want you to kind of melt into that energy. Okay. Melting, melting, melting. And you may feel some relief. Maybe you notice that you've been kind of holding yourself tightly in that lower area, in those lower areas. So I want you to just kind of let it melt, melt and widen. Keep your hands open like this, like I'm going to hand you something or like you're holding something. Do you feel that? Do you feel that energy just kind of like softening at your base and kind of widening out like you have a cone of energy coming down from your solar plexus and it's just kind of getting wider and kind of like melty i'm picturing it almost like it's really black and thick like a black thick uh play-doh or hematite dough or something like almost like that that magnetic stuff like magnetic putty or something is what I'm picturing. I'm not sure why, but it is. That's a very dense, magnetic, sort of thick energy that I'm I'm picturing and that I'm kind of asking you to kind of embody. So if you know what I'm talking about, there's like putty that's magnetic. That's kind of what I want you to feel like, like silly, like some putty, some silly putty. And you just kind of like, you're, you're squished out, nice flat base, it's kind of like mushed feel that. And I just want you to sit in that energy. I'm forcing you to sit in that energy with me. Okay. Take a couple, couple deep breaths with that. Okay. Let your problems kind of melt into the mush. Massage it into the mush. Don't worry. This will be worth it. 
Mush it out, mush it out, mush it out. Holding your hands open. Okay, now that you're kind of mushed, I don't want you to move. I want you to listen to my voice. Kind of tilt your head back a little bit until you're really relaxed. Now, gently listening to my words, I want you to know that the Abundance Workshop this month for the Guardians was more about widening and opening your chasm of reception. The body in which or the container in which you can receive and hold abundance. So in a way, we're widening our container or the holding tank, I want to say, of our light body in our physical body by visualizing what I showed you. And that whole area is just opening up. It's just a nice, big, empty chasm. We're widening it up. So I want you, even if you need to go underground, start pushing it like a bulb underground, pushing this, this, this vacuous almost space, this container, this empty black container, opening it, opening it, opening it, opening it, making it larger. And the calmer you are, the wider this container can get. And with more breaths, you're kind of widening it per breath. Every breath, just widening it, widening it a little bit. Now I wanna challenge you to do this exercise longer past this workshop. In your own meditations later, I want you to open and widen, open up, widen the container. That's what I keep hearing, widen the container. And I'm really feeling it at the base of my back, the base of my spine, just really putting that intention to open it physically, like you can almost feel the pressure coming off when you visualize just opening it up. Some people have a lot of pressure in the discs and their lower back and such. And I have heard it is because of fear of money and abundance also that is like a sort of a mystical medical understanding sometimes, or you're not feeling supported. So, but energetically, I just want you to open it up. Like you're opening up the mouth, like we're, it's almost like we're making a clay pot and I'm asking you to like widen the walls of the clay pot, like the clay, the clay is spinning on the plate. And I'm like, okay, widen the walls, widen the walls, fortify and widen the walls, gently widen the walls of this container. This almost, it is the void though. It is, it's an empty, it's the emptiness because we're wanting to open up room for more to hold more. Some people are even, I want to say nervous, like they don't have enough. If that's been you, you're like, well, I'm not, I don't have enough. It's like, we're, we have to get proactive. Okay. We need your container to grow. Clearly your container needs to get larger. So we're going to energetically do that. And for some reason, I'm just doing it. I'm feeling it in my own energy body, I'm really working the lower chakras and just widening that base and opening it up at my, at my I want to say my discs of my lower spine. I'm widening it up. I'm feeling it in the pelvis, widening up in the pelvis. Women know, like if you're ever preparing to have a baby, there's lots of exercises in order to open up the pelvic floor, open it up, widen it out. Whatever you know, open up the cache of your memory, whatever you have in there. If you're physical background, you know, all you athletes out there, I know you're out there athlete to athlete, like open up your memory banks. What were, what were the exercises to help open up your lower body, your pelvis, your hips, open those up, do those stretches. Even if you haven't been doing them, open those up. That's what we want. That's was the codes. We're opening up the container to receive more receive. And sometimes people just don't take the time. People don't take the time to actually open up and be that vastness that's like ready to fill that container, right? So let's open it up. Let's empty that container. Let's empty that vessel. Make it nice and big. And just hold it there and know it's there. 
And that is kind of like your body. It's like your energy body. You want it to be this big clay pot. Like I'm literally picturing myself this giant clay pot with legs with a nice, nice little opening, like a nice, like if the wind blew off the top of it, it might make a nice jug noise, you know, but it's got a nice, nice big vase. Just like walking around like this big vase, like those huge vase, huge empty vase, just like the potential to receive so much, hold so much. Now, of course, your vessel is that container and what is in your vessel is the breath, is the soul, is the life, that abundance, you know, just to be able to breathe the air and breathe a little extra and you get high, like super high <laughs> just by breath work, like there, if you have an abundance of air, oh, you could pass out. So of course there's that regulation that comes in with abundance, but also those of you needing the space to put it energetically is more and, and mentally, it was really what was coming through very much. So when you're feeling like, oh, I'm ready for that abundance or maybe sometimes we start to feel constricted and it's like, no, you got to do the opposite. You have to start pushing out and just be like, okay, I'm a big, empty, big empty clay pot got so much room to put things in like ooh it just tempts the universe even like you get a you get a you buy a bookshelf right you buy a bookshelf you buy tupperware whatever you buy an empty container oftentimes promptly something goes in there you just have to and then you have to get another thing because you just keep getting more stuff because the thing you've got to hold all your stuff is now full of stuff. So you need another bookshelf. You need another Tupperware container. You know, this is just kind of the case of abundance. It does build. Once you start bringing in empty containers, things come to fill them. Even when you're, <laughs> even when you are digging a hole, you know, you're removing the dirt from an area. You're making a deficit. What comes in to fill that deficit? The rain. You know, there is where there is these these areas of deficit, there seems to be that energy that wants to come fill it. So that's kind of the energy that I wanted to share was kind of coming through for me in an abstract way. So I hope that I explained it all right in a verbal way to kind of give you that maybe mental flexibility a little bit. Perhaps this isn't something you thought about when it comes to abundance but this is the case. So now that we're kind of, we've been broadening ourselves, we've kind of, I forced you to kind of visualize that for a few moments here. You've kind of gotten into the mood. We've gotten into the mood of abundance. We're visualizing now. What is it that you're ready to receive now in your container, into your spirit, into your experience, the container of your lifestyle, the container of your life coming on? What is it? Is there something there? And if there isn't, then excellent. Maybe just enjoy and savor the next breaths that you're going to take while I move through the next visualization. If nothing came to mind, just really savor those, those oxygenated breaths, just sipping on them. Okay. While I'm going to ask those of you who did visualize, okay, I'm welcoming this into my container, into my vessel now, write that down. Write it down, what it is that you're welcoming in. All right, <clears throat> great. So you may write a few things and that's totally fine because some people need a few more things than others based off of where they're at in their life, the circumstances, Totally understood. Uh, there's no judgment here. It's just simply an exercise. So if you're judging yourself now, grab that. Be like, okay, grab that judgment. Be like, look at it. Whose judgment is this? Whose voice is this? Could be your mother. Could be your father. Could be your grandmother, grandfather, aunt, uncle. Could be someone you know, right? Your boss, you know, your mentor, whoever it is. If there's a voice or guilt or something that just populated, like I said, just grab them, look at them, be like, I'm different than you. I'm living a different perspective of source. Thank you for your concern and love. 
always. Thank you for your love. I release you. I release you. <laughs> I release you. You've written it down, right? You've written it down. You've written down what you're going for, what you're, what you feel that you're opening yourself up to receive right now. That's unique to you. That's all you. There's a reason why that's happening. And there's a reason why it looks and feels and whatever the same way in your mind. Now, if you were writing down something now that you weren't expecting to write down, maybe at the beginning of this, or maybe you're thinking about abundance before and you're like, oh, I need this. And then just now you wrote down something completely different. I want you to really just reflect on that. What's different now? Is it because I've made it more intimate? Is it because that whatever it is that you're trying to bring into yourself, you're really bringing it into your container, into your body, into your aura, which is your body. Your aura stretches beyond your physical sight. Your aura is, ugh, I mean, arguably quite large and it does stretch into your neighbor's homes for the most part. For those of you living on acreages, you learn to stretch your aura even bigger and you will potentially still be stretching your aura into someone else's home. Our auras are very large, but what is it that you wanted intimately in your aura? What is it that you wrote down? And now let's think about that thing maybe that you were contemplating at the beginning of this, like, oh, abundance, I need this abundance. What was that different thing? Write that thing down too, please. Write that thing down with like a little star being like, I need to review this more. I need to think more about this. What, why, you know, what kind of intimacy do I really want with this thing? Can I do it with a less intimate way? Or do I want more intimacy with this? Do I want less? How can I make this work for me and my health and my trajectory, my goals, and just start kind of parsing through it a little more, break it down, really start kind of dividing and conquering that abundant thing that you maybe didn't want to bring in after all. Why? You know, kind of analyze that in your further meditations. So now we have to go into a large scale. So we're going to go into a little bit of a large scale. So right now you're kind of thinking more present moment, right? You were writing down something more present moment while you're welcoming in. So now I need to expand you to this year first. So let's now, we're going to just open up our ability to receive now on the quantum level, as if it's already happened, as if it is next year or whatever, or you already know every single thing that you got this year, every single bit of abundance that you exchanged and received and worked with and experienced this year, every single bit. Pretend right now that we're quantumly aligning with every single thing that's going to happen to you this year that, like I said, your abundance in and out, every single breath, every single bite, every single item, every single experience that you're going to have this year, your abundance this year, we're just going to absorb it now. Ground it in now because you might as well. So if you don't have your feet firmly planted on the ground, I would ask you to do so now. Put your hands together at your chest because this is a, a stronger, I want to say circuit that we're going to tap into because this is more data that I'm asking to tap into now. So we're tapping into your whole year now, the abundance of your whole year. Feet firmly planted on the ground, channeling that energy down into the earth between your hands into your heart. We're just in that state of reception and gratitude. Thank you for all of what is going to be this year, all of the abundance, the meals, the meals, the deals, the experiences. I'm so grateful. I'm so abundant in the things that make me and my personality blissful, lucid, aligned, attracted, attractive, ascending, aligning, redefining, and dividing. Situations that no longer serve us from situations that do serve us. 
things that resonate with our personality and things that did not. We feel all those things and experiences, both polarities, the losses and the gains. Now I'm visualizing you like your feet are turning into roots of a tree and they're spiraling down to the earth right now, grounding you deeply. Just like that wide base that you've got, spread out your roots nice and wide into the ground. Visualize that. Feel the structure of your trunk now, how solid it feels. Do you feel the nourishment coming up your roots and feeding your the base of your spine? Do you feel it? You feel the air in your lungs, the tree, the branches in your lungs filling with air as you breathe. Breathe in gratitude, breathe out satitude. <laughs> in gratitude, out satitude. In gratitude, out satitude. Okay, when you breathe out, you really do breathe out toxins from your body. body. So breathing out really is breathing out the, the toxic waste. So abundance goes both ways as well. So all of the stuff that you're going to be processing, the good and the, I want to say the dead, like the new and the old, the new cells and the old cells, you know, all of the new cells you're going to grow this year. Thank them. Thank you for growing. Thank you for thriving. All of the cells that are breaking down and dying this year in your body. Thank you for growing. Thank you for thriving. And thank you for passing on your building blocks to build newer, healthy cells and continue the momentum. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All of the abundance this year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I receive it now. I'm holding space for myself to receive it now. I'm holding this space out of respect for this abundance, for the gratitude. I'm holding the space right now out of respect for the abundance of this year. The abundance of the new and the abundance of the old leaving. The fertilizer and the fresh flowers and fruits. So visualizing yourself as a tree now, those of you who are in harvest season, you all of the fruits on your tree right now are ripe. Some of them are falling off. If you've ever seen a fruit tree, you can see how messy they get. They really do. They can get very messy, right? All of those fruits, they just fall. They just fall. The tree just drops them. The tree just grows them all, grows as many as they really can, and then just drops them. And while growing all those fruits, the tree also grows a little bit in height, grows a few more branches, grows more leaves, grows more of their root system, but also they grow these fruits. So they may grow new life, new trees in other places. So their abundance to be a whole new tree, a whole new living, breeding organism can, can potentially exist just out of the, the fruits of these trees that they drop, they just drop them. They just drop them. There's no scheduled dropping. There's no scheduled time about where each one of these fruits is meant to go. Every single fruit, every single seed inside every single fruit. There is not exactly a schedule that the tree makes to make sure that every fruit is efficiently used in the way that humans like to think about things, or even maybe the AI or the robots about efficiency, use. Even people who hunt other animals, they use every single part. But animals who hunt other animals in the wilderness, they don't eat every single part. For the most part, a lot of them will leave bits leave bits behind 
some things get eaten whole for sure, but yeah, some parts get left behind. And what does that go? It goes to fertilize the soil and whatever local fauna is there gets a part of it. It gets, it's, it's not lost. It definitely ends up going somewhere. It does get invested elsewhere. It's very hard to remove any energy from our system. The reinvestment of it is, is bound to happen. So like these trees and this fruits, these fruits are your ideas. They are your loving words. There are your fruits in a way. And like the trees, you're allowed to just let them be. You're allowed to let them grow and you're allowed to let them fall. And if a critter comes along and scoops it up and makes something with it over here, makes a whole new tree, maybe even a whole new forest, one single fruit, one single idea of yours can make a whole new forest. But all the other 400, 500, 600, 300, 3,000 fruits, berries, whatever that you dropped on the ground, a lot of them could just soak right back into the soil right at your feet and re-nourish you. But the chances are that some of them can create a whole new forest or feed a whole generation of many different animals and plants and bacteria and micro, micro animals and so on. All of these things, the the economy and the ecology of just a simple fruiting tree is such a simple example of what abundance, in my opinion, really is and what I wanted to bring to this workshop today. And this example, I'm not the only one who uses it, not the only one who talks about it, I hope, because clearly it is there as a mirror for us to remind us like, wow, I mean, you and me, we shed skin cells like nothing, hair like nothing. In a similar way, it's almost like a tree shredding, shedding its fruit. It's very much like a very natural thing that we make, we have an abundance of and so on. And in doing so, somehow we come upon more food and we grow more cells. Like the system just seems to keep feeding itself. The food makes its way back around. So with abundance in general, of course, a fruiting tree with healthy roots is a wonderful thing that we want it to be abundant. We want this thing to continue growing in abundance. It's abundance doesn't seem like a waste to us. But then when it comes to an abundance of things that are not necessary or an abundance of toxicity in the body, imagine now that there's an abundance of water. You know, your roots are getting flooded out. You know, the tide is rising. There's been flooding, you know, it happens. And all of a sudden there's an abundance of water, but it's choking out your abundance of sunlight, of soil, of nutrition, and so on. You've just got water, got nowhere for your roots to grow. You're washed away, whatever. And enough water can do pretty much any damage. It's terraformed our entire planet time and time again. This abundance of water right now, there's this balance though. Nature likes to keep it at a certain balance, but there is those moments. And there's also moments, like I said, of, of, of predators of like the pine beetle, like that didn't get cold enough for a couple of years. And there was too many pine beetles and we lost thousands of trees in the, in the boreal forest over in the West coast and upper West coast. I lived in that area. So that's an example of something coming to mind, but there was just an abundance of these pine beetles and it was devastational. You know, it was great for them, <laughs> but it was not great for the entire ecosystem that they just destroyed basically by removing and killing off these hosts, these trees. But did it destroy the ecosystem? Did those trees really go anywhere? No, they did decompose. They are re-nourishing the soil and new trees were being able to grow because the canopy was opening up uh, new trees, new, new systems. There was always somebody to kind of fill that container in that part of nature. Um, but in a desert, you have an abundance of sand, but an abundance of sunlight, but you don't have an abundance of much else. There is sometimes an overabundance and then there needs to be some balance. You know, sometimes there's too much toxicity in the blood and you become toxic. You know, there is an abundance of sometimes an abundance is not a good thing. So the prayer of abundance and the desire of abundance, I would say is also kind of like 
dancing on the edge of a sword. Like you have to be very careful about what it is that you're manifesting the abundance of. And so if you're just a manifesting abundance in general, you could manifest more of an infection. You could have manifest more of of a drought you could manifest more of a flood you could manifest you know too much rain in your rain dance or you could literally manifest too much in your garden your own garden you could even manifest too much wealth too many to acquire too many assets like it happens people will acquire too many assets and then they have to liquidate because it's just they just don't have the capacity to manage that much abundance so of course you can go to a, a certain extreme. And even in the Bible, they say <laughs> a rich man uh, getting into heaven is like going through the eye of a needle, something like that. It's like the more things you have, the more abundance you have doesn't always mean that you are having the most, getting the most out of life, getting the most out of heaven on earth. And so with abundance, I want to say it's more of a spiritual concept and you have more of a abundance of spirit an abundance of capacity, abundance of experience, these sort of non-physical things is more where abundance can thrive more instead of in the physical plane as much, ironically. Of course, if you've been needing and you've been living without and you've been sick, you've been starving, something has not been right, you've not been able to provide for yourself and clearly you're, you're under eating, you're underweight, there's something not right, you're not quite getting the abundance you need. And there's areas in our world where people are living this way, despite their best efforts. They just don't have the nutritional dense, the fats, you know, access to fish, you know, the fats and the proteins that a lot of people need to keep their brains healthy, to keep us going, to keep us grounded, to keep us not feeling crazy. A lot of us need these fats and these these oils to keep our body from going nuts, like from us feeling nuts. Um, <laughs> these brains consume a ton, a ton, and it needs to be fed. If you've not been able to experience that level of nourishment, I want you to really focus on feeding your brain first, feeding it with fats and proteins first. Focus all of your energy, all of your finances on feeding your brain the most grounding nutritional foods. So the next decisions you're making for your investments of that energy in, for your investments energy out, will have the best chance and the highest level of conscious intelligence behind them, fueling them. So reinvesting your energy, whatever it is you have, into feeding your brain these fats and proteins to make those next investment decisions, even if you're just counting penny by penny, I want you to reinvest yourself in that way the best you can, fueling your body to be its most prime tool to serve you and your consciousness and your spirits. So you may continue now to grow your investments to make things that will then replenish later like businesses and fruit trees and... um things that will grow all year long, things will come back and regrow, you know, things that you can harvest and regrow. Those of you starting your gardens, grow things that will not require your labor next season, but will just grow bigger and make more of itself. If you have that capacity, work, work smarter, not harder. And your intelligence, the way you're feeding with that fat and that protein, your brain will have you working smarter not harder and it will help rebuild even if it's just day by day rebuild your momentum to build and invest in yourself and replenish yourself in ways that will suit you better and i've been there so please take this advice if you know that you haven't been eating properly to replenish yourself or make good decisions make your brain function good and if you're really struggling with your brain function and you're like, I eat all the fat and protein for my brain, I eat amazing, but still something's up. You may just need to do a heavy metal cleanse. You have an abundance of heavy metals potentially in your body. Turmeric, milk, drink, look it up. Really amazing thing to help pull that stuff out of your body. And the chlorella spirulina in your smoothies 
also will help chelate that out of your body and clear up your head and your mind, that brain fog. But this abundance, you know, some of us are moving into realms, some of us already are in realms where they're managing a lot of assets and so on. And if you're managing that well, and you're like, yes, my assets are good. I have a balance in my mind, body, spirit complex. I'm spiritually engaged. I'm grateful. My abundance is solid. And I'm like, and Alexis, what can you do for me? What else do I need from this workshop? I hope that we are now going to cultivate that energy and that confidence that you have in those codes right now, which I'm also cultivating in my own mind, body, spirit complex. Let's just cultivate that together and kind of make it a diamond in our hands and fortify that for the collective human consciousness of our earth. Fortify that feeling, make that neural pathway of our cosmic mind, of our global mind, of our human mind, fortify that neural pathway, that feeling. My abundance is secure. My abundance is stable. It is balanced. I have abundance in all the right places. I'm fortifying that, fortifying that, fortifying that. I am abundant. I have abundance in all the right places. I am fortifying this for my next generations. I'm fortifying this out of gratitude for my previous generations. And I'm fortifying this for all of earth, all of this solar system, all of life in general, this feeling, this truth. I fortify this now with this group, with this workshop, with this video, Throughout time and space, it is fortified that feeling of grateful support. It feels good to have what you need. And may all beings access this frequency easier thanks to this fortification process that we're doing in this workshop. Abundance in all the right places for everyone. So they may all enjoy their own soul personality and expression. And we may mature and expand as a planet, as a humanity. I want to say as a race as well. <clears throat> and in a sense, the race of earthlings amongst other planetary races and galactic races that are now kind of percolating into our, our honestly, into our culture. Earth, and is, Earth is confidently abundant in all the right places. We're fortified. And we're intelligent about it. We know how to invest in ourselves and in others to keep the good times rolling. Nice. Nice. So finally, I'm going to have you open up your hands again and just, just for the fun of it, say, I'm grateful for all the abundance and all the right places that I receive in this lifetime and in all lifetimes. I'm in alignment with this gratitude and I always will be. May this energy percolate out into the multiverse May we always feel whole and supported by the great spirit of creation in general. Woo! Big, big breaths, big breaths. So thank you for the air. Yeah, that that if you're ever feeling like you're not abundant in a moment, just remember those that air in your lungs. Because when you don't have it, you notice. <laughs> pretty much and the end of it after that so just go back to square one if you have to and just rebuild from that if you're kind of losing yourself feeling lack 
feeling fear. Go back to the breath, which I know everyone says, pretty much everyone should, I feel like, but just have to say it here. Here and now as the finale of this, we really did the, some cosmic abundance codes. I'm even just now thinking like all the things I just said, like, wow, that was really powerful. Like we're really grounding in a lot. I'm feeling my, my roots still really deep in the earth. I feel like my antenna is up pretty high, but it feels solid. It feels like I'm really bringing in a lot of like really solid and secure energies, not just like lightning come and go. It's like an obelisk that's going to stay here like a statue or a tree. Like I said, like truly a tree would make more sense. So like this, just this big, really deeply rooted fruit tree. It's just going to be a big old fruit tree. It is here. It's planted. I feel it. It's not going anywhere. And imagine yourself, you know, plucking the fruit off of your own tree, just being like proud of it, you know, proud of your own fruit. Whenever you have a brilliant idea, just like this is the fruit off my own tree. This is my own true abundance right here. You know, this is the gift. And whenever you eat a fruit off of another tree, now you can be like, this is their true genius. And, you know, the tree is glad that you're eating that fruit. Truly, it is what it's, its whole evolution is gone to you getting that fruit in your hands somewhere away where it couldn't walk. Basically, that is the goal. That is that is success. And just like your own ideas, you know, you can only get your own ideas so far. It really is all about who you know. So our, our I feel like our goals really are to populate these ideas like these fruit and hand them out to where you know it's going to be appreciated to someone who's hungry for this type of nourishment. Be like, what's your likes and interests? Oh my gosh, I've just been studying the weather lately. I'm obsessed with it. And I'd be like, oh, excellent. Here's a fruit from my tree. I study space weather too and blah, blah, or have you heard of space weather or whatever, you know, something like that. Like that's sort of extra abundance for someone who's going to appreciate it. Share where it is appreciated, I guess is the last key here before we get into the feedback from the guardians on this recording. Now, the last thing is, yeah. Share with care. Share with intention. Activate items that you're sharing also with good intentions, just being and sharing that also. Just be like, this is given with love. These sort of things, just little bits, just increasing the lucidity of your moments, of your exchanges. That is going to increase your gratitude and also the types of abundance that you're going to get to celebrate now, because you'll be more in tune. You'll be more tuned in on the exchanging of energy and of physical things in your environment more, hopefully with what I've brought up with this workshop today. So uh, many tingles and chills and goosebumps in this training, especially when talking about polarity. Uh, yes. And clearing things to make space. I'm glad that you like that. Yeah, that was really intense. So I'm going to scroll back. And just look at your written comments. And then we are going to get into your verbal feedback. If you don't, if you have to say something, have to say something, go ahead and speak your truth right now. If you need to step up, say something right now in the chat. If you can, in the written chat. And then we're going to do the final energy thing. So hopefully you're feeling nice and grounded. I'm just going to look back really quick. You guys are talking about what you ate. So yeah, back to the beginning of the workshop. Let's review how we started. What was it that you last ate? And now can you think of the thing you ate before that, the previous meal? If you were like, yeah, I was super lucid with that item I ate. You know, this pizza or this green tea, tea mochi or your chocolate Easter egg or your piece of kimchi that was exploding in your mouth, Vanessa. Thank you. That's a great example. Vegan strawberry cupcake and staying away from those processed foods, getting those homemade baked goods and so on. Excellent. So abundant. So grateful. Such a good warm feeling. Those good treats that we get. 
Ah, uh, yes. And then we reviewed what did the other people get? What did they get? So we see someone saying, Julian's here saying, one of your truest friends took their family on a seven day cruise. <laughs> and that was like, whoa, excellent. And they're super excited. The, their kids are super excited. Their experience is going to be epic. And you're feeling a part of it even because it's just such a awesome occurrence. Like, yes, those are, that's that overflowing, that fountain. Your colleague received a new job, which allows them to travel. And you celebrated with ramen and you cheered them on for their dream job. Yes, Vanessa so wonderful. Nice, nice, nice. You're... Someone actually did get a Lego playset you saw someone get and you were happy for them. That's hilarious. I haven't played with Lego in so long. I just remember how hard it was to take apart, but I used to like it. it was, it's a great one to meditate with. I've been doing art with my pastels and so on as my creative sort of thing and feeling so abundant again, just opening up my fresh pastels that my friend mailed me at you, I think it was like two years ago, just getting to use them finally and just being like, yeah, I've used them a bit, but just really getting to use them and getting to use them all the way through. That's going to be awesome. I, that makes me feel so abundant. Like you can use a pastel so many times before it's, it's dissolved into all of your paintings. Okay. What else happened? Your mother has embarked and launched herself on a new health journey. Oh, she's celebrating, feeling good. Yes going on a tour oh a singing tour they're a musician wow fantastic what could be more abundant than co-creating the entire physical universe together i know we are already doing such a fabulous job co-creating our universe together so just just a pat on the back you know really this really is just these workshops are more of just a review of all the fantastic things that we're already doing just kind of bringing lucidity to the themes of our awesomeness one by one you know how awesome are we at at this theme and what are some awesome things we can say about it <laughs> and good job everyone you know thank you so much for co-creating our this physical universe together i appreciate it i appreciate all of that that you've done with me for this that we're already doing i'm so grateful so thank you for bringing that up alex i appreciate it you're seeing jo joanna seeing others getting things that you've been working on getting for yourself for a few months. So that's a good sign. Where do you find sacred tobacco for these ceremonies? Ah, very good question. Tobacco is tricky because there's a lot of laws I've learned about trading tobacco specifically, which shows me again, how sacred and how spiritual there's a spirit side of it uh, that they're managing literal, literally the colonization of the spirit of this land. Like it's still being governed and governed. So like, these are things about overabundance of laws that are not necessary overabundance of rules, not necessary overabundance of bureaucracy. That's not necessary. Where is the overabundance that is no longer, and we can recycle it into something that still is needing some nourishment. These are also things that are coming through for this workshop. I'm not speaking about Hoppe though. Um, that was totally different, but yeah, also very difficult in, I would say in English speaking trading countries, it's tricky, but if you go into the Spanish speaking or South American countries, things are a little bit easier for trade of these, of these plants and stuff, of these medicines and stuff, these like really ancient, just basic leaves <laughs> of certain plants <laughs> that are in like tombs basically from thousands of years ago, they're still using all the same plants. Anyways, these abundances, you know, they've lasted a long time and we're proud of them also. It's a part of our human history. So keeping that flow, keeping the abundance flowing, keeping our true natural abundance of the leaves and the plants and our crops and so on, keeping them safe and abundantly growing and naturally mutating even and adjusting and and so on these are things also for the codes of the abundance this month uh vanessa celebrating leaving the corporate world and starting the entrepreneurial ship wow excellent you're being more vocal about your progress and your goals. Yes, being more vocal and sharing with others, sharing your gratitude and also calling out about what you're still needing, what you may need a hand in, 
another excellent way to utilize the abundance that we are, the abundance of our connection, the abundance of humanity. Excellent point. Thank you for adding that, Vanessa. Um, medical medium, Madeline says, speaks on brain saving foods and juice recipes, which may be, which focus on safely grasping and removing heavy metals. Yes. Uh, the one with the blueberries, we've been eating a ton of blueberries also for that, to pull that stuff out. So would recommend looking into those types of recipes also. Excellent addition, Madeline. Thank you. Today, before the workshop, you heard a voice. Abundance is the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it, says Maria. And what you've said has really opened my heart to that. Excellent. Ah, another point to add to that, if I may. A wonderful thing that we also have, which is why I did a ton of visualization with you in this particular call, was that we <laughs> have the ability, we have the abundance in here to literally visualize whatever we want, anything. We can visualize and even feel emotions all in our own mind, in our own conscious mind, in our conscious eye, our, our inner eye, even in our dreams at night. Really, how many of you had dreams where you've like gotten something that you really wanted and in your dream, you're like, wow, like, yes, I had that the other night and was like, yeah, look, it's right here. I got to touch it and see it for myself. And that is so powerful. So right now also like visualizing, even though we already did visualize, like what is it that you want to hold, touch? What does it smell like? What does it feel like? Those are, again, manifesting techniques also. But we have the abundance to literally take ourselves on our own little vacation before we even go on those dream vacations in our own mind and feel the warmth of the sun on our face feel the drink going down our throat. Like we can visualize so much lucidity of what it is that we want to feel in any moment. And that is our abundance also, our gift. And so thank you for bringing that up, up Maria. Also, thank you for inspiring that thought, but it's not incredible. Like I'm so grateful for that ability and for the, for building that inner imagination world almost has helped me break barriers and what I even know is possible. Like in here, you don't have to go with the laws of physics. You can have islands floating in the sky and so on and visit those and ride your Pegasus unicorn around island to island of everyone's island castle resort that you're hanging out in. But somehow that's going to man we're manifesting that on the ground. Like you're all on the ground in your homes, but you can still make your home an island castle resort vibe. <laughs> and you can still live stream and bring me into your home or have me over to your house. And there's ways we can kind of bridge those gaps also. <laughs> uh, Madeline wanted to say melting, opening and melting the root that we did earlier today. You watched an adventure time episode. Excellent. My, I have to start watching those again. My best friend loves adventure time episodes. She talks about them a ton with her psychic medium work because they have so much content to pull forth from her memory. So what did you say? Which LSP literally melts into the earth to expand and heal the world using her natural personality power. She was my visualization for that exercise. <laughs> oh my God, that's so amazing. LSP, I'm trying to figure out what character that is. Am I crazy? You might have to say, but you guys know, like I said, I've seen some of the show, but there's a ton of characters. Obviously it's a huge show. There's so many episodes, but excellent. So yeah, we're melting into the earth entirely and healing the whole earth with our personality, with our bubbly, happy personality energy. And that earth is that container in which all of this abundance does live. It is kind of a closed container where that energy doesn't go or die, live or die. You know, you can't destroy, create energy. It's all kind of trapped here in a way, but we do get inputs. Like we get cosmic wind, we get constant inputs from our solar system. So we're getting washed with new stuff all the time. Every time you see the solar stuff I show and the solar plasma coming out, that's actual abundance. That's real stuff that's going to come into our, that plasma, all that stuff's going to come in here. It's going to feed us. It's going to create new things. 
and um, the entropy of all the stuff burning off in our atmosphere and stuff gets burned off on our planet also. So this system is, uh, it needs constant healing and support as the sun is constantly giving us new things. I know it's been a long, <laughs> we have abundance of time. It's been an abundantly long workshop so far, but we've been doing good. I'm grateful you've been abundant in time in order to share this. Oh, Lumpy Space Princess. Thank you for that LMP, Madeline, for the Adventure Time character. Thank you, guys. Excellent. So, yes, of course. And if anyone wants to pop on to speak, speak, since I've been, I've caught up on all the messages, it looks like. Yes, finally. Yes, thank you for the recording here. Last comment here from... Emily, I always reflect on how it's all, it all belongs to us, our planet, kind of this whole container we're living in and how it individually belongs to us and then collectively belongs to us. So it's like our shared and personal item. So our communal marble that we take care of and are very abundant on. And so just Shout out to her also in our planet and all the abundance that she's giving us this year in the harvest season and all the new sprouts that will be great, mighty, abundant trees for many years to come. Like just shout out to you, Earth, Gaia, Tara. I know a lot, even some people calling her Lyra, even like all those versions of her, all of her soul, Sophia, whatever it is, just shout out to you and your abundance may you have a wonderfully abundant year in all the right places let us know how we can help ease that process of course as your little arms and legs <laughs> running around on the surface but yes i know i've been chatting but you guys go ahead if you want to pop on if anyone has any questions or anything else they want to add you can turn your mic on and say something and it will be in the recording for this this month. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to keep this on. I'm going to upload this as it is. So go ahead. And if no one says anything or they want to do it in the comments instead, I'll be watching. I'll be watching. Nice. Well, everyone's satisfied. Nobody was just like busting. Oh, fighting to get to the microphone so that's good let's do the everyone got your pen and paper still hopefully let's do the final thing then <clears throat> this will this is going to be more abstract again so we're going to be doing loose hands so maybe give yourself a new piece of paper a new page or like flip it over and do the back so i'm going to do you more loosey-goosey with your hand it's going to be a bit of a, a final exercise so one last comment before we do this and I get you back into your abstract and then we are done the workshop for this month and we have to pick our next month's theme. There's been a couple coming in for me and I'm like, how am I going to make that work? And I kind of want to pick a theme that's kind of sexy or kind of like a little bit eye catching because I've noticed like sometimes the themes are too broad and people are like, why do I need a workshop about abundance or like a really broad topic? But I want a topic that's kind of like, wait, I kind of want to know what they're going to talk about in that. Because every time I think of the topic, that's where my brain goes and goes, oh, how is this going to work out? Like, what are we even going to say? But I'm easy. I'm easier to get excited about more basic things. I'm trying to pick something that's kind of going to make people be like, wait, what? So that's going to come through. I'm going to work on that with this. So with this exercise. Oh, like, nice. And with our chakras here, Maria is just bringing up how She's been feeling mostly things in the heart and the solar plexus. And we've been working more on those today for sure. And we held the face also. We did a hug also. A couple of things. We did the fountain at the top of the head. Those were some of the things I remember from this workshop that we kind of came through. But then also you're saying your, your uh, sacral chakra when we were talking to Gaia just then. Excellent. It's like deep into the sacral love. That's good. Earth is our sacral chakra in so many ways. Our womb Okay, so as we go with the sacral chakra, maybe in this womb and creation energy, which is where a lot of this like raw abundance comes in throughout all of us, we're going to kind of channel this raw abundance that's always flowing out of you right now, just to kind of 
have a little fun, just the finality of this workshop, just a little bit of fun. Because sometimes we get really serious when it comes to abundance. We get really serious when it comes about workshops, uh, watching people on YouTube, all these things get a little serious. And I need to like break the fourth wall a lot of the time. And I'm doing that more this year, just being like, hey, I'm a human being. I love doing workshops and I love spiritual concepts and I love talking and I love I love kind of being a librarian and having this and bringing it all together. But I also love throwing people for a loop and doing things different and looking at things from a different angle. So that's what I want you to do again. So I want you to take your non-dominant hand <laughs> and we're going to put it on the piece of paper, put your writing utensil in it. I want you to close your eyes. We're going to release some energy, okay? So I want you to start drawing with your non-dominant hand. And I want you to just start letting your hand do what it wants to do, okay? You may have some pent-up energy because you've been sitting here a little while. So again, you have an abundance of energy maybe built up in your body, right? So we're going to, I'm going to ask you to play with it now. So put in your non-dominant hand and I want you to start drawing something. If eyes are closed. So you're just kind of going abstract with it. Don't think too much. Just start letting those shapes come out, letting those jerky movements kind of come out of your hand, right? Let it go, let it go, let it go. Just going to push you a little longer. Keep going, scribble, scribble. Let it go. Okay, now I want you to try and write a word or a letter. Okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. So... We're good. We're good now. You're going to, you know, finish up there, finish up with your drawing. Okay. So <laughs> first of all, I want to ask you, what was the word that came out at the end there? So this is totally you. This is all you, obviously I'm not going to know, especially those of you who don't write comments under videos or anything, but what was the word that came out of your body, out of your non-dominant hand, kind of the side of you that you know, oftentimes is a little more abundant in potential because you aren't using that side, but it's just as capable really as the other side. So there's action potential kind of not being used in your non-dominant side of your brain, your body. Excellent. So you guys are in the workshop, the guardians here at the recording with me are writing love is one of the words. Dream was another one of the words. Nice. Hello was one of the other words. So these are in a way playfully abundantly coming out of you. This is kind of like percolating your, what is abundantly percolating out of your body? <laughs> good, good. I'm glad you enjoyed the scribble because it did feel good. I'm sure it felt, it was pleasurable, right? I'm, I hope. Me is another one. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> now I want you, oh, sick. Okay, excellent. Um, I almost wrote kill, which is kind of crazy. I don't know why, but then I wrote kilt, which is weird. So for me, it was like, really, it's like, we're getting into deep psychosis on my end. I don't know why, but the first thing that came out of my hand was a K and then an I and then an L. And then I was like, kill. I was like, why am I writing that? And then it was like T and I was like, kilt. All right, let's just go there. And for me, I have a little more practice with automatic writing and so on. So for me, you know, I have an abundance of kilt energy. Maybe, I don't know. I need a, I don't even own a kilt, but hey, like maybe I just have a lot of Scottish energy in me that's not being utilized. Could be, I could be. I literally just learned that I could be an Irish citizen uh, due to my great grandfather. So there's some stuff in me that's flowing out abundantly. You know, we're all finding where, we're, what is it that we're abundant of? What volcanoes are we? What's coming out of us? So weirdly for me, that's what came out. I'm just being totally honest. Again, what came out of my hand and thanks for you guys for sharing. And we're going to look at the scribbles next. And that will be the final kind of cue into your psychology a little more. So, <laughs> oh, I see. I see. You didn't write the word sick. You were saying sick or like dope to the other guardian in the room about their drawing and enjoying their drawing. I'm sorry. I miss misread that Julian, bro. My bad. Your scribble looks like a moon and a sun. You killed people together. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, let's, is there a pun here? Like, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to look into that. Julian was thinking about berries. I've been eating a lot of berries. 
Vanessa drew a crown and a backward spiral with lines, four directions, a cloud, a foot, some chair, some legs. Excellent. Madeline says she's Scottish. <laughs> Watch me have channeled like something for you guys by accident. Um, you wrote that you want to go to Scotland. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> okay, so that's a good sign that you're probably going, by the way. So I don't even know if I have Scottish heritage. I think I do, but at least not in my great grandparents. I know at least out of that crew, I've got one born in London and one born in Ireland somewhere. So I've got some, I got a, I've got a Brit and I've got an Irish person up on there, at least on the last, and my great grandparents and the rest were like Canadian born people and in like Ontario, but there's a lot of Scottish stuff going on over there. Obviously, there's a lot of like even the occult side of Scottish energy and stuff too has kind of been on my mind a lot. And I know that's all woven in there. Like it's woven into our whole society. Uh, even the fact that half of the United States, like the whole West Coast and like down is pretty much owned by Spain, like low key and the old maps and all of it. And it's just kind of like there's all these countries and these anyways. There's a lot. There's a lot of abundance. There's a lot of secrets. There's an abundance of secrets. There's an abundance of stuff out of your DNA and your ancestry that you haven't even accessed yet that are bubbling up out of you. And we're kind of, I'm calling upon that now too, as well. Yours looks like a totem, says Maria. Excellent. Scotland is dope. Yep. You were born. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my God. That's right. I have a Scottish born in the just the group of 12 of us here <laughs> that's so funny excellent and your mom was born there okay so for some reason scotland's coming through which is very funny the unexpected so let's keep our eyes open for the abundance of Sc in Sc scottish energy okay the abundance of scotland is coming through for this guardian training we are planetary guardians so what's coming out of us also and themes and so on i'm putting this all in here. Those of you watching, let me know what you scribbled out. Please put it in the comments because we're just going to keep building the concept bubble of this workshop when I post it online and so on. You can still, we're, we build and build and build. So I want you to look at the lines also that you kind of drew, how abstract they were, how much of the page did you use? That's another thing. Did you notice you were more on the left or the right of the page? This is my psychology background also being like, because if you do, if you find that you notice that you scribbled way more on the left or way more on the right, that is also a sign that you kind of maybe want to do some hemi-syncing, listen to some hemi-syncing music, do some hemi-syncing activities, do more with both your hands. Maybe even if it's super extreme and you only, only, only on the very extreme side, you may want to do a few more, go online and do a few more tests about uh, hemisphere tests, brain hemisphere tests and testing also like, uh, brain health testing in general. And it'll, it'll check you. Cause you may have like a lobe or a area of your brain that's not functioning that's best or something. And you'll notice by even just by how you scribble on a piece of paper, that's how they can tell uh, a lot, a lot about someone's brain and how it's functioning actually. And I remember all these things, but I don't. But did you use, did you go from the top to the bottom of the page? Did you go left to the right more? Um, did you do more abstract, which is more of your feminine side of your brain, more loops and spirals? Or did you do more lines? That's more your, that's more the masculine brain, the more linear side, the more time-driven side. Just what, observe yourself. Is there a balance of squiggly lines and straight lines? Maybe you have a balance of both. Was writing with your non-dominant hand super hard? Was it easy? These are sort of the areas where you may also catch yourself, where you have an overabundance of attention or use of certain parts of your mind, body, spirit complex, where you could be using other parts better. You know, you have your favorite things, but you should be using other things, maybe even favorite organs or favorite muscles or favorite workouts. Those are an overabundance of those things because you're capable of so many other flexible things. So start getting a variety, start scribbling with a variety more, you know, 
do something else. So now that you're thinking about it more, take your non-dominant hand and do something that you didn't do to that page yet. Fill in an area of the paper that you haven't filled in yet. Um, do a motion that you didn't do yet. So if you didn't do any straight up and down lines, do some more of those now. If you didn't do any circle or loop-de-loops, do some of those. If you do it, didn't do any like pointillism or dots or like check marks or um, hard lines or thick lines versus thin lines, like try and balance it out. See what you have more of and try and do the opposite now on the page. Okay, so this is an exercise of seeing what your brain's more dominant in, in a way, and letting it be free, and then like kind of kind of adding in now, like adding it in, add in what else is needed. Okay, where else on your page does it is it blank still? What sort of things do you want to put in there? Do you want to like do some gradients, like push really hard, and do you ever, is it even trickier? Like what's harder for your hand to even do? Like just challenge yourself challenge yourself, right? Try and write a word backwards now. Just start with a letter and just see what word you get started with. It's hard. Okay, I picked earth. And so I wrote earth backwards. That was tricky. But that was more of an intentional thing, but still forcing yourself to do something different. It's kind of like, I'm kind of forcing <laughs> you to have more abundance and a different level of neuroplasticity here. Just as for fun, it's like the final work work on your brain here. <laughs> I just saw something about Libra. So I know that's going to make me laugh. Let's, let's see. Ah, we have somebody here from Spain also. Yes. So yeah, we have the Spanish influence here. We have an abundance of it, but it's like low key. There's a lot of stuff that's also we have an abundance of, but it's been trying to like shove under the carpet. A lot of, especially like the occult world, we have an abundance of Christians, but like, it's not really talked about it that way, but you don't need to have the, you know, Christianity to have spirituality. But these are the things we have an abundance of corn, products you know what i'm saying but we don't need that many corn products and that's been a problem we have we have an abundance of canola oil in everything and that's a problem so we're sussing these things out too like where is there abundances that we're trying to like rein in let's keep that on mind too My picture is evenly balanced. Excellent. So your brain, you have a healthy brain. You may listen to a lot of music and you may be an artist. You may do a lot of art. So keep it up. You're a Libra also. So you've got your Libra brains often trying to balance anyways. You covered the whole page. Good. We wanted you to try and cover the whole page. Oh, you wrote some music backwards. Excellent choice. Good skill. Excellent. So yeah, I'm glad that we worked your brain a little bit. I hoped, I hope that this workshop and my workshops are designed to kind of neuroplastic your brain in a little bit of a different direction. Cause we can all watch somebody's very clean presentation about whatever these themes are. And yes, they will make full logical sense. And yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm, very good. You know, <laughs> and I've been to a lot of classes, workshops, and I've read a lot of books and so on. I've read how people like to put information out there and my brain works differently. And I like to sit in a room of people and listen to every single person and be like, and then what about this? And everyone's like, whoa, yeah, that too, that too. And that's always been my skill. And so I just wanted to be like, okay, here's how I see this theme. Here you go. And then you can add that to whatever it is your brain was already populating when you saw the word abundance, just add that to it. And I hope that I was able to add some stuff that your brain didn't think of, and that'll give you some value and a different angle and perspective to look at abundance with for this, for this month, because that was what our theme was. So now we have to pick another theme. Like I was saying, I want it to be kind of like a sexy theme, something a little bit like edgy or a little bit like, hmm, like intriguing, mysterious. It could be mystery or uh, a mystical or the void or abstractness or chaos or something of the like. It's kind of what I'm going for. It's kind of what I'm feeling coming through for that theme. 
for next month for May and not in a negative way, not in a negative way, but I want it to be like sumptuous, like something like bodacious, like something that you really want to sink your teeth into next month and something like that. And I, I, I'm trying to figure out what the word is going to be. The abyss. Yeah. Like the abyss would be a cool one. I have a design for that. The abyss has been kind of a topic I've been talking about the last little while. It feels like, Ooh, battle, the theme of battle. That's a nice one. Yeah. Like mm, something juicy, you know, you want to sink your teeth into it. It's kind of what it feels like. There's just this like density here. It's just like, yes, our next workshop is going to have like some real good dense juicy energy to it. So I'm really looking forward to how that's going to go, how that's kind of the energy as a psychic medium. Also how May is going to feel. It's just going to be like a really rich, juicy orange or like something like that, you know, where you're just going to, it's just going to be super satisfying. It could be satisfaction or something like that. Like the theme of satisfaction where it's just like, mm, like, you know, everyone in your life is going to feel good and satisfied with what it is that life's delivering them you know we did abundance this month and that satisfaction is kind of like the theme that's coming in so maybe satisfaction will be the theme for may and you know do you want to pay money to do a workshop like for satisfaction like what does that mean like what guardian trading theme is satisfaction like what is that going to give me what is the value there and it's like, I don't know, maybe you're missing satisfaction in your life and you want some other ideas. You want a powwow, you want an energy container, you want to help, you want help focusing on increasing your satisfaction with life, your satisfaction with ooh, what's going on, with your abundance and so on. That's kind of what's feeling like. So that that wholeness, that hardiness is what I'm feeling is May's energy. So I know obviously we have abundance themes. So keep sending me um, memes about abundance and so on. So I can keep posting and we can keep building the container of abundance this year. I'm going to do a live stream on my Instagram to kind of review anything that came in after I sleep on this and we get some feedback from you guys. We'll do a live stream on Instagram to kind of bring in new people, kind of teach a little more and kind of get that abundance codes, like really locked in and like, yes, you are abundance. Yes. Like get everybody's morale boosted and then prepare ourselves for May when we're just going to like take a bite out of this. It just feels like, Oh, I'm just so excited. So yes. And continue when you have that moment to meditate, opening up your big clay pot, opening up your your wideness, the barrel of your chest, the openness of your aura, just being like, yes, I am a, a grand container. Fill me with your goodness, with your abundance universe. You know, I am here. I am open. I am free to receive it. And we'll be receiving that. We'll have nice full containers next time I see you on May 18th. And we'll just be like eating our abundance out of it and just savoring in the codes of satisfaction and maybe even that abyss energy also. We'll see. So thank you all so much for joining this workshop and being a part of this recording and this moment in history. I'm wishing you all the very best for the rest of April, of course. And yeah, I, so much more abundance yet to come, like for a whole, our whole planet. Like it's, I like doing these in the middle of the month because the buildup and then like the results so far is this workshop. And then what we guardians get up to in the last weeks of the month on the planetary scale, it's like we get this personal time and then we go and apply it on the per on the global scale and we watch it play out. And there's a lot, seems like a lot on the schedule right now. So I will be right there with you on Twitter and so on, like watching things play out, how it's going to go. And I'll be right there enjoying our abundance with you and the satisfaction as well as we're going to build up those codes for next month, Guardians. Because you've done such a great job, Guardians. Thank you so much for your, your I want to say your selflessness and for your consistency to wake up and choose love every day, to choose love and in your responses on everything. That satisfaction that I feel knowing there's people like you out there, other Guardians out there, it's it's undeniable. That is That is the true abundance that I feel. It's that satisfaction that you exist. It's not just me out here 
working to be a better person and cultivate the goodness and the bestness of all of this, there's other people out there and that makes me feel good. So love to all of you and continuing best of support on your shadow work. I know we're doing just as much shadow work as we are doing the light work. So respect to all of that, respect to your abundances and your families and celebration to all of the things that you've manifested to all the things that they've manifested and shared with you. Just good vibes all around. And I will see you on that live stream as well on my Instagram to do this review and bring in more people, more guardians. And I'll see you next month on May 18th for our next themed workshop and meetup and powwow and dojo moments. So this has been great. <clears throat> Take care and have a wonderful night, everybody. Thanks for coming to the workshop. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>